Yes, Dr. Patra, hand over to you. Yeah, uh, good morning, friends. Uh, welcome you to this, uh, today's uh, guest lecture being hosted by IESD. As you know, IESD has been running a number of programs on hydrogen and uh, it has emerged as a kind of hydrogen academy in our country. It, is, uh, it has positioned itself as a knowledge hub on hydrogen where a lot of studies, research, dissemination, communication, and all these activities are happening, benefiting a large number of people, not only in India, from many other countries. And uh, the feedback that we get is very encouraging. And that encouraging feedback, very intimate contact by the participants has motivated IESG to do more and more. Besides this core programs, which IESG has been running, participants are learning at their own pace. All programs are web-based. IESG also is doing some kind of outreach program a kind of awareness campaign about critical subjects on hydrogen by way of various guest lectures, various consultative programs. And today it is one of those guest lectures and this based on blue hydrogen. It's a very interesting and exciting subject which uh, I'll not be preempting anything, but just one comment I will make that blue hydrogen has emerged as an immediate solution to green hydrogen. And in a way, it is perhaps positioning itself as a competitor to green hydrogen. There have been a lot of debate, a lot of research on the subject. And today's speaker is uh, Mr. Manoj Pal, and he'll, he will be speaking on the subject. And Manoj Pal, he is a mechanical engineer with 14 plus years of experience pertaining to project management in EPC project across various industries. He is also a program and project management professional, and he is an alumni of IESD. He is a member of many professional societies like Project Management Institute, associate member of Institution of Mechanical Engineers, member of Society of energy engineers and managers, and so many. We will be hearing him. The subject is very interesting. The speaker has a lot of insight into the subject. It is, I am thankful at the outset to Manoj that he has agreed to bring that out before us. And this one hour program has got many interesting contents. Besides the lecture, there will be question and answer session. There will be a brief on some programs of IESD. And the program will begin with an audio visual on space program exclusively prepared by IESD for this program. Over to Saki. Uh, thank you, Dr. Patra. Thank you for the wonderful opening. Uh, now I'll request uh, Mr. Manoj Kumar Pal for, to start his session. Uh, 
Mr. Manoj Puerpal, hand over to you. Good morning, everyone. Well, the, as we all know, now energy transition is imposing huge challenge in all in, on all industries. And all the industries over the globe, yeah, they are struggling or trying to meet the future demand, future requirement, how to do decarbonize their industry, how to decarbonize their process, as well as whatever the productions, otherwise products they are manufacturing, how that will meet the future need. And that's the reason uh, we are now, we all are moving towards the, now we all are moving towards the new fuel, which is hydrogen. Well, uh, all over the globe, when I, since uh, as uh, explained by Mr. Patra, I'm from project management background. So for project management person, to know the basic uh, understanding of the what is happening in the industry, what changes are happening, yeah, to be updated on that, that is uh, essential. And while going through all the global news, I came across, okay, all over the world, the people are going towards uh, somewhere there is uh, some blue hydrogen, somewhere there is a green hydrogen, somewhere the carbon emission. And if everyone is trying hard to meet the carbon emission, otherwise to achieve the global warming, the climate change, to fight against the climate change, not in the over the world, even the India, since last Independence Day, 2015 to August 2021, when our Prime Minister has taken place to decarbonize our industry, Indian industry, since as the green hydrogen policy came, then Niti Aayog came, and all the Indian big corporators have done their investment in the hydrogen and renewable energy. Meanwhile, I mean, everyone was trying to move towards the green hydrogen, green hydrogen. Meanwhile, Mr. Mukesh Ambani, yeah, he just uh, uh, made one news, like regarding the blue hydrogen. They wanted to, Reliance Industries want to become a blue hydrogen maker, and they wanted to reduce the hydrogen price, because initially their the target was one uh, dollar per kg of hydrogen, but somehow after a couple of months, so the next uh, blue hydrogen, so that is targeting to reach by 1.2 to $1.5 per kg. And that's, that's what, uh, I mean, uh, while going through with this, I came across the course on IST and later on I have completed two course and whatever the insight I got during this course, I tried to capture in this presentation and so that uh, at least I will, uh, this is not a kind of uh, 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 session where I'm going to speak as an expert. Here, the so something which I have learned, a brief introduction on overall, what is the hydrogen scenario and what where we stand as a India that I'm going to explain you here. So I'm going to, uh, going to take you through the blue hydrogen. These are the some terminologies which I have used here. And the, here the word is sustainable. So the word sustainable means Although we are, uh, we are trying hard to meet our current uh, energy demand, but we should not uh, compromise with the ability of the future generation. So we have to do our, achieve our growth path, but uh, we have to keep the, whatever the need of the future generation is that we have to maintain. Uh, and the whole, the whole uh, things is, is related to with the, our global warming, otherwise climate change. What is this climate change, otherwise global warming? This is a certain increase in temperature that is a one point, uh, which is causing the entire world to uh, move, move, shift from one fuel to other, that is from the fossil fuel to the, some renewable energy fuels, otherwise some fuels where the emission of the greenhouse gases will be less and here, the main target is out of, if we go by this chart, then out of 100%, there is a 76% is carbon dioxide and 16% is methane. 
that accounts to total approximately 90%. So if we will try to store, capture these greenhouse gases, so we'll be able to reduce our uh, climate, otherwise uh, whatever the effects are happening on the global world, on, the, on our earth. And because, and uh, this is started from the, uh, our, uh, I mean, uh, this is a, uh, on, on in, the, in the year of 2015, when the co conference of parties of 21 happened, at that time, our uh, prime minister, uh, has participated and at that time all over the countries they have taken place to reduce the carbon uh, i mean uh, control the temperature within 1.5 degrees celsius based on that there was some carbon budget was formed and uh, all the countries all the developed countries they have uh, contributed in the carbon uh, the, uh, that carbon budget 1.5 degree and the, whatever the countries were the developing they have tried to use that budget but somehow that from 2021 to 2026 in the next conference of party which is conducted in the last Glasgow, there was hardly any change. I mean, if we are going to compare at the time of 2015, I mean, with that target we want to reach within the 1.5 degree, then the, the carbon emission should be limited to 18.5 gigawatts. But as, as on day today, the overall uh, India's carbon emission level is 2.8, which is the third emitter. But there is a China, there is a US. Okay, China is uh, 10 gigawatts, US uh, is a 5 gigawatts, and India is uh, around 2.8. So if you accumulate, uh, add all these three, then that is going to 18.5. That means we are not on the right track. We are not able to meet that 1.5 degrees. Centigrade limitation. So that's the reason in 2016 that the next marking is done. That is, it, it will be less than two degrees centigrade. And from our country also, the Panchamitra was taken by uh, our Prime Minister that we will non-fossil energy capacity to be uh, in, enhanced to the 500 gigawatts. Then energy requirement through renewable energy up to 50 percent by 2030. Then reduction in the carbon emission, reduction in the carbon uh, intensity, and net zero emission by 2017. That is the pledge taken by India. Now, if I'll check where we are here, on the non-fossil energy, yes, India is on track because that covers uh, hydropower as well as nuclear power. But when we go for, for the energy requirement of, from renewable energy by 2030, by 50%, so if I will take a data from the electricity uh, ECA, uh, uh, as per that, the in 2030, the energy requirement will be around 2500 uh, billions of units. So if I, will, I mean, uh, take uh, in terms of 50% uh, of that, that is uh, coming around um, uh, 1250. Uh, but even if we reach 50% capacity, I mean, the, uh, if we will meet the 500 gigawatts of solar and wind because renewable energy is only solar and wind that does not cover the hydro and nuclear. So India needs to generate roughly 700 gigawatts. So that is not sufficient. Second is the reduction of in carbon emission by 1 billion tons by 2030. Right now, uh, as per the current projection, the India's uh, carbon emission in the 2030 will be roughly 4.5 eight and now if wanted to reduce by one ton so that will bring down to 3.8 that means the per capita emission should be limited to somewhere around the three but if we are going to compare with all over the world all other countries even the european countries yeah their per capita emission is around four even to their projection will be around in the 2000 that will be four other developed country, years will be nine. So we are as a developing country, yeah, and we are also struggling. We because we have we have some NDC, we have some national determined commitments. So we need to achieve that. And how to achieve that? So that is a path. That is a way we have to work for. Now everyone is must be wondering why hydrogen. 
so hydrogen is when hydrogen burns the emission will be just water because that is going to burn in the suppose we, if you are you are going to use in the uh, uh, transportation in the fuel as a fuel cell so that will burn and uh, there will be emission will be just water there won't be any carbon dioxide yeah so as well as we are going to use in other sources there are there they they there are so many uh, processes to generate the hydrogen and if we are going to compare in terms of energy density so one one kg of hydrogen is going to produce around 33 to 35 kilowatt of energy as compared to diesel and petrol they are going to present around 15 kilowatt so that means in terms of energy density hydrogen is more efficient and if we are going to convert our entire energy system let it be whatever the targets through in, into hydro, hydrogen that means we will benefit our future generation so there are uh, many types of hydrogen in the markets gray hydrogen blue hydrogen green hydrogen yes green hydrogen is hydrogen which is produced from the renewable electricity which is uh, solar and wind blue hydrogen is when we are going to use the uh, natural gases as a so phase stock and will capture carbon dioxide gray there is only difference between gray and blue hydrogen is in gray hydrogen which is right now 98 percentage of current hydrogen production for all over the world is gray hydrogen if we are going to capture carbon dioxide from that that will become blue hydrogen green hydrogen we call as clean hydrogen because there is no emission oxygen is emission but blue, blue hydrogen we call as low carbon hydrogen because although we will try to capture car carbon dioxide but there the current technologies which are there in the system that is going to limit us to maximum capturing level of 95 percentage to 97 percentage so that is they are called as low carbon hydrogen so what is the current scenario so as per the current scenario by 2050 the all over the world the hydrogen requirement will be 530 mega millions of tons per annum and if we are going to replace fossil fuel by 530 million of ton by 2050 by that way we will going to uh, we will meet the uh, reduce the carbon emission by 6 billion tons of co2 by 2050 and at present we are uh, i mean as all over the world we are generating 120 million of tons of hydrogen out of that uh, 120 just one percentage is through blue hydrogen and there is a hardly certain one percentage is pure hydrogen otherwise through uh, renewable sources so so now by 2030 i mean if we are going to target for the intermittent solution because 2050 and 2022 there is a gap of 30 years so we have to try for some alternate solution so that like from 21 to 26 we are not able to achieve 1.5 degrees centigrade temperature rise so it should not happen even after next five years we will not be able to achieve the, the next two degrees centigrade targets so we have to work for the some intermediate solution and that solution is blue hydrogen now, where we are in India, as we come uh, uh, like current in India, the hydrogen requirement is 9.1 million of tons, which is mostly used in our refineries and fertilizers. And our requirement is 1.7 million of tons by 2030. That is the projection. Now, if to generate, I mean, if you wanted to, I'll uh, uh, walk. We are targeting to produce 5 million of hydrogen by 2030 by green hydrogen. That means we have a requirement of roughly because a green hydrogen, that means renewable energy, that means solar and wind. So that will require 115 gigawatts of renewable energy. Now, in India, already, I mean, the, in the during the last summer, the peak 
energy consumption was around 20 to 20 hundred to 23 hundred billions of uh, unit and our production in the range of the same even there is a during that period there was a power shortage in some of the area and so even to meet this and if i'm going to compare with this current renewable energy production in india out of 404 gigawatts is 114 is only through renewable energy and we in the next by 2030 we are targeting to offset these renewable energy to for the renewable uh, for the green hydrogen that means we are our uh, we are supply security i mean there's a reason the first there are three words affordability sustainability and supply security our supply uh, india supply is not to the mark to meet the green hydrogen five millions by 2030. second is second the main component of the green hydrogen production is electrolyzer in 2020, the electrolyzer production was 0.3 gigawatts. If you wanted to meet our 5 million tons of green hydrogen requirement, so we, by India itself, have the requirement of around 10 gigawatts of electrolyzer. And even all over the world, because it's not India, all the developed countries, yeah, they, they are moving towards the green hydrogen. So, worldwide, the production capacity, the, Targeted production capacity of electrolyzer will be 17 gigawatts by 20, uh, 26. Out of that, India want 10. So anyway, there will be electrolyzer shortage. Apart, second thing. So, and India being a develop, developing country, the current population of India is roughly 140 million. We also have to struggle for our quality life, our well being, our overall residential energy demands. So in India, moving directly from fossil fuel to green hydrogen is, is not, uh, I mean, practically possible, I can say. We can try, but it's not practically possible. This is a green hydrogen report, which is published in June 2022. Even as per that, the green hydrogen is uh, that will become cost parity by 2030 only in India. But if we, we will go by the what is the electrolyzer requirement in, in India by and uh, what is what will be the renewable energy current condition uh, per, uh, generation capacity of uh, in India, then at least till 2045, we need to have some other reliable solution. I mean. That will uh, uh, that will go in parallel because the, the uh, continue with the current uh, what is a uh, green with the uh, as a in parallel with that the green energy. So if hydrogen can uh, so uh, that's the reason. Uh, I mean here we are for the blue hydrogen and here uh, the overall our target is to achieve net emission, reduce net uh, net zero emission, and uh, low production cost. Right now is a critical because in India we need for uh, resources, and until unless the developed country, uh, uh, we, we will get some funds from all over the world, so we will not be able to produce. Otherwise, enhance our manufacturing facilities to meet our green hydrogen demand. So, and when we we are, we are going to compare green energy with the blue hydrogen, which is the most common is through steam methane reforming with CCS. Now, when green hydrogen is produced through electrolyzer, but without renewable energy, so energy emission, and the carbon dioxide emission is more, far more than the SSMR without the CCUS, that is carbon capture unit. This is a well-established, I mean, uh, low, Blue hydrogen technology is already matured in the market. There are number of processes to produce like steam methane reforming, autothermal reforming, coal gasification with and without carbon captures. In the blue hydrogen, 
uh, in the steam methane reforming, which is the most common and most of our hydrogen is related to, to through the steam methane reforming. Natural gas is a feedstock and we add a steam that produces hydrogen and carbon monoxide. Again, with the carbon shift reaction, they, they, there will be a generation of the carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Carbon dioxide can be captured and transferred and stored through CCUS and the pure hydrogen, which will, will, will be used as a fuel for to meet our energy demand. So now here, the main component is carbon capture unit because the hydrogen technology, hydrogen production technology is matured one. Now, but the carbon, how to car capture, transport and storage. Yeah, where, there we need the investment. And this came from, so this is called as like, uh, there was an earlier circular economy where we were trying to reduce, remove, uh, recycle, reuse. We have added one remove that is called as carbon circular economy. What is remove? Remove is carbon and capture is, that is the basis of this CCES system. So now carbon CCS, uh, I mean, this is a uh, te CCS technology is a, is a technology which we will help us to achieve net zero. This will mitigate the climate change by uh, capturing carbon dioxide emission before they reach to the atmosphere. There are two, I, I, I will run, uh, run through. So what uh, all over the world, uh, worldwide, all the agency, what they say is, so the net em emission to achieve net emission zero, the CCS, we have to rely on the CCS because there are some sectors which are called as hard, hard to abate sectors, which are cement and steel production units. Then removing the CO2 becomes difficult and CCS through direct capture will help to remove the carbon dioxide, which is emitting into the atmosphere. At present, around 25% of CO2 emission is, is from steel and cement industry. That's the reason. Now, even in India, uh, there was a day someone Dalmia cement, they have installed carbon capture unit in their plant. They, they have roughly uh, 26 million of tons of carbon emission and out of that, they have been in the in nine states, some thirteen plants, and they have installed this, and they are able to meet the global norms of carbon in the cements. Similar on similar line, Tata Steel, they they have installed this unit after this in their furnace so that they can re remove the CO2 and that can be reused. So even the Indian industry, now they are moving slowly, slowly towards the CCUS system. What is CCUS? It has three parts. One is we have to capture, second is to transport, and third is to store. Now, how to capture this? Whatever the carbon is, this is also called, the, this is a part of sequestration, which is capture and storage. There are a number of ways to capture carbon. One is a biological, geological, and technological. At present, the biological, which is like ocean that captures around 25% of carbon emission. Soil through means of photosynthesis, they captures carbon, but when we burn soil, they again, or whatever the carbons are captured that get released into the atmosphere. Then the forest, it captures around 25%. So roughly around 50% of 50 to 60% is through biological sources. 
in process there are like when we are going to do modelize our system blue hydrogen technology so the at the time of pre combustion otherwise post combustion there is a process to capture carbon and to eliminate before going it enter into the atmosphere because once it enters into the atmosphere there is a certain shelf life it it will stay there for hundreds of years and that will trap the our uh, radiations and increase the temperature of the earth and ultimately that will result in the cl climate change and whatever the weather otherwise droughts other things are happening so to control that we have to find out the technological sources what is a direct capture at present there is a, we are hardly capturing 1 million of tons of co2 per year to this medium but if you wanted to meet energy demand then we have to scale up say 85 metric tons by 2030 and 980 metric tons by 2050 so from going from 1 to 950 by 2050 need a huge investment policy all the community leaders they need to invest and make a policy which will in encourage the industries to move towards the, these technologies so as of now there are two uh, sources one is a liquid system uh, of carbon capture second is a uh, solid carbon capture now once this carbon is captured what we have to do because whether that is safe or not this is the questions whether that is safe what we will do so now co2 is not flammable and we have controlled mechanism even in uh, us they they are they are publishing their whatever the CO two data are pipelines as per their uh, standard. They are publishing publicly, and this is not toxic, not flammable. So it can be safely transported from one part to other part. No, but where there is a infrastructure or not, because CO two once captured, we cannot directly tra uh, transport. We need to compress it. Otherwise, we have to liquefy it. and then we have to transfer it so why but they they the infrastructure needs to be developed because where we are going to transfer we have to find out the suitable way where we where we have this carbon capture either we will extract carbon and utilize for as a chemical uh, otherwise where we can use it otherwise we need to store somewhere where it can remain as it is for longer time and later on it can get converted into the some other mediums so so infrastructure need to be built up and that is anyway all over the world the now the ones the seriousness of this technology will be developed automatically the people otherwise industries all the countries will start investing in this then what is the ccs network because if we as a single individual industry are going to struggle to transfer our captured carbon from one place to other so that will be very cost effective requirement now to make that cost effective we have to develop the ccs hub in the ccs hub that is a network where the all the industries of the nearby they can collect their captured carbon and feed to that otherwise we can go for the common uh, facility where the whatever the hydrogen is generated will be consumed in all those industries and the whatever will be the products by products of this co2 that will be transported through common pipelines or modes 
Next is the storage. The next question is once transported, what we have to do? So this CO2 can be stored underground as a, this is called as geological storage. Below, because the, we, we, we have extracted oils and now there is a gaps, otherwise caverns underground. So there is a geological passage. In those passages, we can transfer these CO2. Even this CO2 can also be used to enhance our oil recovery. When we produce oil, otherwise extract oil from the wells, there is a, during the first phase, second phase, we are hardly able to extract 30 to 60 percentage. But this CO2 enhanced oil recovery, we, will, we can try to optimize and remove all whatever the oils are there underground. So that is a one application where we can use this CO2. Second is this CO2 will be stored underground and that depends on the pores and permeability in, in the geo, un, uh, underground. Pores, once that is uh, stored in that pores, Okay, so there are certain techniques of recovering oils from the wells. These are thermal injection, gas injection, chemical injection. And there are some international laws also which are monitoring and controlling the CO2 transfer storage worldwide. So it is safe to capture, store and transfer CO2. Now, what are the risks? There's a research is going on. What is the possible HSE risk of health, safety, and environment risk of this geological CO2 storage? But till now, there is a two risk which is identified as a CO2 pipeline leakage and CO2 well blowout. And this, uh, whenever there is a leakage, I mean, in, in, in this, these through, uh, two sources, there is a because these carbon dioxide get mixed in the air and disappears. And second thing is because of the thermosiphon effect that dry ice are formed and some noise. Apart from that, there is no uh, fatal, uh, fatality happened till now. What is the benefit? With this source, we will be able to reduce the greenhouse uh, gas effect that is the control climate change. This can be used as a reliable, we can, we'll be able to continue to use our renewable power sources such as fossil fuel. And uh, this carbon dioxide can be used in the concretes. This will used to enhance our manufacturing. Like uh, we can make plastic polyurethane and Carbon can be used in, in pants and as a in the jewelry. There are certain technologies. There, there, there are total three methods of production of these hydrogen. So steam methyl reforming, autothermal reforming, and oxythermal. Now the worldwide technologies, all the uh, organizations like process organizations, they are developing technology to modernize this system so that it will become cost effective and the based on the capacity as a pack in the package form that can be used by industries. So Shell, they they have a SGP technology sim on similar line the KBR. They have a single streamline, large scale blue hydrogen production. Holder top say they are also have safe for technology. So these technology are developing and this will improve the costing capex cost of this implementing blue hydrogen in the brownfield jobs. Now the next is economics. 
because at the end we have to see what is the economics let how economical that technology or process is to implement in our system so as per the global ccs institute as per their comparison they have done a comparison from all or all all the institutes and they as per that currently at present steam methane reforming with ccs will like cost will be roughly 2.1 dollars per kg against the clean hydrogen that is the green hydrogen 6 dollar per kg what are the components now when we go for the blue hydrogen so what are the components to consider while calculating the capex and opex so that we can come on the overall project budget so one is the capex cost that based uh, uh, like uh, from one project to another there is a slight reduction i mean the drastic re reduction as compared to whatever the comparison i have got there is a 30% reduction in overall capex so since the technologies are developing all the i mean the most of the process industries they are coming with the, their own technology well established and proven technology so the capex is on lower side and that will reduce second is opex cost opex cost will remain as it is because that is completely depend on the operational requirements and there is a fuel cost now here if when i am comparing blue hydrogen cost project uh, per unit cost considering the million uh, per uh, minimum gas cost which is 3 mat uh, million bb 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 to you to 11 usd so there is a cost increase i mean from 1.1 to 2.5 and that includes even the transportation cost because here will be will have transportation storage cost so that is going around up to 2.5 on similar line this is for the steam with the reforming when we go for the coal as a fossil fuel as a energy source because of the although here the cost of the fuel, fuel that is the coal if we increase from 2.05 to 2.20 yeah that is not adding more increment into into the cost rather than the transportation and capex so for the coal as a source of a uh, fuel stock the cost is going roughly around 2.2 now this is a one comparison what are the based on the sources and uh, this is a there is a one ongoing project which is uh, already in um, at execution stage and this is the world's largest hydrogen green hydrogen production facility of 1400 billions of tons of green hydrogen and that has a huge requirement of 23 gigawatts of renewable energy and this will be commissioned by 2028 so this is a just comparison based on that where we stand in blue hydrogen and we all know when the project is big there is a cost it is better to compare because the smaller projects have more capex now here one is first is the requirement what is the uh, there will be requirement of the water one resource so if we go for this blue hydrogen that means coal or gas with ccs then the requirement for the sm smr unit that is gas ccs will be requirement will be 6 kg 
for the steam per kg of hydrogen whereas for the green hydrogen because the, for electrolysis the water is required there will be 9 kg per kg of hydrogen now the next is renewable power that is energy requirement that is roughly 2 kg per ssmr unit and 3.48 is for the, with the coal as a feedstock that means for the, for the fossil fuel, the energy requirement is just maximum 4 kilowatt per kg. Against when we are going for the renewable energy, that is 55. That means at least 10 to 15 times more than the blue hydrogen energy requirement. Now third is land. As when we are comparing these project, there is a renewable power requirement of 23 gigawatts. That means huge land is required to install these solar PV cells and the wind power, wind uh, machines. Now, once we are comparing, so the land requirement is I mean, you can see the graph, it is number of times more than the what we required for this uh, blue hydrogen. Now, next is, okay, sorry, uh, this graph was here. So the, la uh, the land requirement is so much. There is hardly a... 14 or 17 with the natural gas or steam methane reforming and the same for the ARH project which with which I am comparing is 6000 kilometers. So in terms of resources, water, electricity, land, in every aspects, green hydrogen requirement is much. Yes, but the ultimate aim is reduction is the carbon greenhouse which we in green hydrogen will be zero emotion so but when we compare on economical aspects so definitely it calls for huge investment now to how to reduce this cost because at the end we have to work so that we, we have to make the technology of economical. Like in green hydrogen, worldwide, everyone is working towards the electrolyzer, is manufacturing of the PV cells, electrolyzers, enhancing the water treatment facilities, all this aspect. On this similar line, we have to work on blue hydrogen also. The policy makers, they need to think on this also. So like industries, they are integrated plant. So that is one option to reduce the carbon, uh, I mean, to reduce the capex. Like in each, uh, when, uh, when we compare right now, uh, the cost is around 2.2 kg per per kg of hydrogen, I mean dollar per kg of hydrogen 2.2 and if you wanted to reduce and make it compatible with the green hydrogen say by 2040-2050 so the integrated plant that is capex will add more value because if when we are going to compare with the cost so here the 50% out of 1.5 the 50% is capex that is even more than 50% 0 0.75 is capex cost. So with the modernization, that cost there is a chances to reduce with the integration of the plant. Technology innovation, we have seen a couple of the technologies, but to improve and improvise those technologies and to come up with the more cost effective and modular. So that is that needs to be worked out in future. Next is TCS hub because 
uh, at the end like today some of the industries they are refining oils and sending to fuel stations like for the feeding of the uh, to meet the energy demand on similar way we can have the ccs hub with large facilities where the hydrogen production can be done at one place and that later on that can be ship transferred to the at the consumption unit and whatever with the co2 will be generated that needs to be transport and the uh, eliminated then once they, this will be integrated plant then there will be chances of the whatever the steam because of the heat we are recovering steam and heat that will be used to recover the heat and that can be used then as these all these technologies are at the nascent stage they are at the early development so learning by doing that means we have to do some the experimental ways try to improve the efficiency and later on apply in the next in the next project so what is the key takeaway so here blue hydrogen is a, has important role to play and there are the technology is mature but we have to make it cost effective in future to make it compatible second is carbon capture storage and utilization that needs to be worked to reduce co2 emission for positive impact on the climate then the cost we need to work to meet net zero emission okay i uh, uh, in in between actually i uh, have to make what is net zero hmm. net zero emission is it's not like that we have to reduce our emission to the zero it is not like that we have to offset our emission that means suppose we have certain level of emission so that we need we have to do but against that there is a carbon credit in the market otherwise carbon offset we need to procure the credit those carbon like and uh, whatever the carbon dioxide is emitted that we need to those credit that will be bring in equilibrium to the net zero that means not zero emission but net zero at the end we are capture uh, purchasing the carbon credits now this will see uh, this can reduce the co2 emission by direct use of fossil fuels we have strong policy strong and sustained policy is required and policy as i mentioned many times policy must support the business case for investment by increasing expected returns and decreasing the real and perceived risk for industries once they are supported by policies by funding then they will definitely go for the investment because there is a risk involved the next is in that should be supported by infrastructure and this infrastructure needs to be supported by country level otherwise through government policies and at the end green hydrogen produced by electrolyzer that means through renewable energy that is solar key takeaways now the uh, there is one more is hydrogen i mean this is out of the topic hydrogen from the biomass because yesterday while preparing this presentation i came across now for the next conference of parties that is next carbon un carbon national now the all the countries are gearing up for this hydrogen from biomass because it instead of emitting the carbon dioxide it will it has a negative emission that will it will capture carbon so we don't have to worry about what we have to do after capture carbon is captured so just one liner on this thank you if any questions 
uh, okay mr manoj uh, uh, we have some questions from the participant and the first question is uh, is there any standard that specify the requirement for hydrogen to be called green or blue Uh, in my knowledge, no. Uh, Dr. Patra, you can answer this question. See, uh, this classification all, or color coding which is done for hydrogen is purely based on the carbon intensity of the product. And that carbon intensity is directly linked to the source of the hydrogen. Otherwise, from the application point of view, the properties of hydrogen remain same. Have I answered? Okay. Uh, we can move on to the next question, uh, Mr. Manoj. Yes. Uh, what will be the future of fossil fuel uh, electric vehicle with development in blue hydrogen? Well, future of C. Whether that is the electric vehicle or fuel cell vehicle. So anyway, we, we at least for the next 15 years, we are not going to get away of, of the electric vehicle because even electric vehicles are in the development stage. And hydrogen, the requirement and during initial slides, we have talked about what is the hydrogen requirement of our industries. That is somewhere we are targeting by 2030. 11.7 that is 12 million tons for the refineries, steel, or uh, uh, fertilizers. So, to meet the transportation demand, that is to replace, uh, uh, to use in the vehicles, we need to generate more and more. So that will that will take some time. And uh, electricity vehicle, yes, definitely because that if we are going to generate power through uh, uh, energy, which is through renewable. So we are able to meet our carbon emission, even because even the electric vehicle also, there won't be any emission of the carbon dioxide. So ultimately we are targeting to achieve the reduce the greenhouse effect. Okay, uh, I will may, move to the I, next may, yes, sir. May, may I add a point? Yes, sir. Electric vehicles are classified under two categories. One is battery electric vehicle. Second is hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. Therefore, depending upon the availability, the distance that the vehicle is traveling, the which is called range, and depending upon the renewable availability. So both these vehicles, both these types of EVs will run. I don't think there is any competition Rather, there are complementarities. But what is established is the long range vehicles, long range traveling vehicles, and heavy load vehicles, including trains, are better serviced by hydrogen fuel cell. Thank you. Okay, we will move to the next question. The next question is Can this blue hydrogen be blended with natural gas, just like green hydrogen? Yes, it, it will be blended because when we have to transport hydrogen from one place to other place, we have to compress it. We have to convert, either compress or otherwise liquefy to certain height when it will be to roughly 700 bath. And otherwise, we have to grow it to cryogenic temperature as a liquefied gas. So once we are blending it to with other mediums, so it will become easily transportable. Even right now, whatever the infrastructure we have, the pipeline infrastructure that supports around 18 to 20 percentage of blending. Okay, that is the answer of our next question. Uh, uh, also, Mr. Manoj, our next question was how much percentage of hydrogen we can blend with the natural gas pipeline? That's around that 18 to 20 percentage. Okay, and uh, we will move to the next question. What is the use of stored ca carbon captured? How we will end up with the stored carbon? Okay, whatever the 
stored carbon capture are there so there are three uh, like once we are feeding that through geological means underground yeah so there are three types of trapping one is a solution trapping second is a uh, uh, third i mean there are three trappings i am not able to recollect so what will happen so in the solution that will uh, get mixed with the saline water and form the uh, increase the salinity of the sea water second is where where there is a pores that will get accumulated and that get converted converts into the rocks and in the third case what will happen that will form certain types of minerals and get uh, stay there underground okay we will move to the next question refinery fertilizer and uh, other industries are also producing hydrogen what safety measure we will provide because leakage detection is difficult well in 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 refineries there is a, and fertilizers whatever the hydrogen are getting produced they are already they are all, all, are already safety norms are there and that is well controlled by api uh, so apart from that uh, i don't think so some additional safety requirement because they, that is a well established process in the market okay we will move to the next question uh, which will be a profitable model for hydrogen green hydrogen or blue hydrogen as a business plan as a business plan blue hydrogen will be the profitable as of now green hydrogen will because that technology once that will get developed after a certain period because like when uh, if we compare like uh, to produce one units of solar power 20 30 years back that was costing in thousands 60000 50000 that with the improvement in the technology improvement in the pv cells efficiency now that is came down to two point to even the last bid which was done i mean that is the lowest i can see in india 1.99 kilowatt per k units of solar power and on an average that go in the range of 2 so in 20 30 years it re reduced so drastically similarly on for the wind now that, that is a, a higher than the solar around 2 that will go around 2.75 on an average and electricity in india is 3 point something one on an average so to make it competitive yes definitely in future as all the technologies innovations r and d will happen it will become cost competitive okay the last question uh, we will have uh, 18 to 20% mixing uh, hydrogen with gas natural gas in india does any pilot project has has been has been carried out we will referring to the global experience no 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 in india ongc they have done some pilot project okay okay uh, thank pavan, you pavan pavan tika gas which is a cgd project supplying natural gas for domestic application and for automobiles in the area in the geographical area of uh, indore there the pilot has been done and as i understand the pilot has been successfully running thank you okay uh, thank you uh, for all the questions and the remaining question we will answer and we will post in the lms uh, now we are going to show uh, a video for uh, a high uh, a space program
uh, ISD is launching a space explorer program soon. And uh, okay, friends, uh, as you know, as I started saying in the beginning, that IEST has been working like a knowledge hub on hydrogen. It has developed number of programs which are running in a, a very successful way. Number of students, participants have enrolled themselves into the program and have gone out with flying colors. The programs are unique. In a sense, they are web-based. They are self-learning mode. They are highly researched, structured text. There are recommended readings. There are mental support available. Then you have something called a face-to-face -face interaction with the mentors and other experts, including a Viva session and culminating in a action-oriented research project work. All this together has made these programs outstanding by their, by their reputation and uh, the, the feedback that we get that this kind of uh, initiative is not only unique in India, perhaps stand out amongst all that is available in the world world. Currently, the programs which are running, we have some flag, flagship program, which was hydrogen technology application and economics, subsequently specialized programs on the blue hydrogen and then electric vehicle. And we have also a kind of rudimentary program, primarily aimed at elementary level, entry level, uh, participants, including school, school students. And as uh, Sakib just announced, that perhaps uh, very soon a space exploration product is also, I mean, program is also coming up. Uh, those who have availed the program, have participated in the program, it is in the interest of spreading knowledge, in the interest of making our country prepared all this hydrogen mission that uh, is happening in our country world over. Uh, let large number of people participate in this program and take benefit out of it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, at last, I would like to thank the speaker, today's speaker, Mr. Manoj Kumar Pal. Thank you for the wonderful session. Uh, thank you for uh, all the participants for joining. Thank you.